Hey, welcome back to my channel. My name is Michelle. This is Michelle Reads YA. This is an introduction video to a new vlog. I decided to have my husband, Casman, <laughs> choose six books off of my shelves. I have six shelves, that's one book per shelf. So I wasn't around when he did this and these are the books he decided to pick. Now can you tell me why you chose these books specifically? Well, they're a theme. <laughs> As you can see, they're all food, sort of food related. Um, one is about water, which is not food, but it does go in your mouth. Okay, so six books, six, same theme. So the first one is Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens. I have heard a lot about this. I got this because it was on sale at Barnes and Noble and I cannot pass up the sale. For years, rumors of the Marsh Girl have haunted Barkley Cove, a quiet town on the North Carolina coast. So in late 1969, when handsome Chase Andrews is found dead, the locals immediately suspect Kaya Clark, the so-called Marsh Girl. Cool. Okay. Uh, my friend Erica said that this was a little slow and she didn't know if I would like it. <laughs> so uh, we'll see. The next one is Peaches by Jody Lynn Anderson. I got this at a used bookstore because it was cheap. Murphy McGowan has bright green eyes, a reputation as the wildest girl in Bridgewater, and a way of getting out of trouble she gets into. But when she's caught stealing from Darlington Orchard, she's forced to repay her debt picking peaches in the hot Georgia sun. Okay. We'll see. I believe I thought this was sapphic, but it's not. I don't think it is. Stay tuned. The next one is Hot Dog Girl by Jennifer Dugan. I got this because of the cover. Eloise Lou Parker is determined to have the absolute best, most impossibly epic summer of her life. There are just a few things standing in her way. She's landed a job at Magic Castle Playland as a giant dancing hot dog. Her crush, the dreamy diving pirate Nick, already has a girlfriend, but is literally the princess of the park. With who is... <laughs> Her crush, the dreamy diving pirate Nick, already has a girlfriend who is literally the princess of the park, but Luz never liked anyone, guy or otherwise, this much before, and now she wants the chance at her own happy, happily ever after. I heard some not great things about this book because how it deals with uh, sexual orientation and cheating, but we'll see. <laughs> the next one, oh, sticker. The next one is Into the Water by Paula Hawkins. I have also heard not great things about this one. This isn't your fault. I own these books myself. So <laughs> I did like Girl on the Train, so. We'll see. Uh, a single mother turns up dead at the bottom of the river that runs through town. Earlier in the summer, a vulnerable teenage girl met the same fate. They are not the, they are not the first women lost in these dark waters, but their deaths disturb the river and its history, dredging up secrets long submerged. We'll see. Once again, not your fault. I already own these books. I've heard pretty good things about this one. This is The Art of Starving by Sam J. Miller. Matt hasn't eaten in days. His stomach stabs and twists inside, pleading for a meal, but Matt won't give in. The hunger clears his mind, keeps him sharp, and he needs to be sharp as possible if he's going to find out just how Tariq and his band of high school bullies drove his sister Maya away. What they did to make her steal, steal off in the middle of the night without a word, a clue to where she was going, or even a goodbye. I believe that the main character of this uh, starves himself because he believes that gives him superpowers when he doesn't eat. So I'm interested in that one. The good news is that I believe most of these are contemporary. So thanks. The last one is Stay Sweet by Siobhan Vivian. I have only read the list by Siobhan Vivian. It was okay. So we'll see. But I think this one's supposed to be feminist as fuck. But you know, I don't know. For Amelia Van Hagen, scooping cones at the Mead Creamery has always been more than just a summer job. It's a sisterhood, one dating back to when the legendary ice cream stand first opened with an all-girl staff. And then I believe there is a rivalry between the new ice cream shop and something like that, but I, I don't know, it's contemporary, so we'll see. So those are the six books I'm going to be reading. I normally don't stick to a TBR, but I'm going to vlog myself doing it, so hopefully we could do that. 
let's see how it goes. So the first book I'm going to start off with is Peaches by Jodi Lynn Anderson. I am probably not very excited about this and it's Zach Hasman's fault because these are books he picked from my own bookshelf. So it's my own fault for owning it, not unhauling it. So we'll see. The good news about most of the books that you picked out is that most of them are contemporary. So that's good. That makes me feel a little bit better, but I will update you as I'm reading this. Let's see how it goes. So I'm 39 pages into Peaches, and this was written in 2005, so it's a bit outdated, but so far it's fat phobic and racist, so we're doing great. Uh, I can't tell you how many times one of the characters, Birdie, is described as heavy and has a little bit more weight around her and then just plain old fat and then let me read you this one people who didn't speak her language always gave her the giggly wigglies so they're on a peach farm and they have like immigrant workers working on the farm and this is what one of the characters said people who didn't speak her language always gave her the giggly wigglies. So, <laughs> Kessman has said he would let me DNF a book, and normally I wait until page 100 to decide if I am going to DNF a book, but this is just so fucking fat phobic and racist, and I'm only 39 pages in. So, I'm gonna keep going, but I just wanna let you know. This book fucking sucks, yeah. So I'm still reading Peaches, and I don't know why, uh, but back to the fat shaming. Hey Birdie, you're having a skinny day. Why would you say that to someone? Don't, this book sucks. I Why have I DNF'd? I don't know. Okay, so I finished Peaches. I don't have much to say about this other than it's pretty dated, it's pretty basic. And it's like a sisterhood, the traveling pants knockoff, but not good. So I believe this is the series. I will not be continuing on with the series. I'm giving this two stars. So not a great start to this vlog. But I don't know. Basically, this book was about three girls who are all very different and they form a friendship over the summer and that's it. It was super basic. I, yeah, nothing happened. I don't know what to tell you. It was just a basic white girl book from 2005. So yeah, I don't know. So the next book I'm going to read is Stay Sweet by Siobhan Vivian. This is probably going to be another basic white girl book, but I bought it, so that's my own fault, and we're gonna read it. Okay, so I'm reading Stay Sweet, and it's fine so far, except that it's written in third person, which I hate for contemporaries, and I don't know why. It's just not my favorite for contemporaries, but I am 44 pages in, and it's not bad for 44 pages in, except for the third person, which I just don't like for contemporaries. Ugh. So, we'll see, I don't know. I hate the writing of So Sweets. I mean, Stay Sweet, whatever the fuck this. Stay Sweet so much. The third person, first person, it's, ugh. It's third person present tense and it is just not working for me. I fucking hate it. I just want a first person contemporary. I feel so outside and it's just like clunky writing. I just, like, the story is fine, it's the writing that's getting me, and I just, like, ugh. Okay, so I'm about halfway through Stay Sweet by Siobhan Vivian, and it's fine. I'm not really loving the third person narrative, but nothing I can do about that. Basically, what's happening is Amelia is senior and head girl of this ice cream shop that is super famous in this small town, and it's all girl run. And then the owner of the ice cream shop dies and her grandson, great grandson, some dude 
Amelia's age starts taking over and they've run out of ice cream and that's where I am in the story. They're about to run out of ice cream and this whole place is like doomed. It's fine, like I'm getting through it really fast. I feel like there's going to be a romance which I'm not invested in at all, but I am really invested in the story of the whole ice cream shop about to shut down. Like I'm really into that. So we'll see. And then I was like looking at my next books that I have to read and I was like, why are they all about food? And I remembered that Castleman specifically picked them because they are about food. Anyway, I really want some ice cream. So that's it. That's the update. Okay. So I finished Stay Sweet and I liked it. In the Goodreads description, it was described as feminist and I didn't get that until like the last 20 pages, but it was. Overall, I thought it was good. It was cute. It wasn't amazing. I don't know. I'm going to give it three stars. I didn't like the romance at all. I was very much invested in whether or not they were going to save this stupid ice cream shop. <laughs> so yeah. Um, yeah, it was good. Three stars. Yeah. Okay. So next I'm going to start the Art of Starving by Sam J. Miller. I don't know a lot about this. It is blurbed by Jacqueline Woodson, so that's a good sign. I'm pretty excited. Another contemporary, so hopefully I like this. Yay! So I'm 100 pages into The Art of Starving, and it follows a boy who starts off the book saying that he's suicidal, and now he has stopped eating. He has an eating disorder, but he keeps saying that he doesn't and with him not eating he thinks that he is getting superpowers the less he eats and I kind of hate it. Also there's this other thing that's going on where his sister like voluntarily runs away from home and he thinks something else has happened and he's also gay. So there's just like a lot of storylines in this one story and it keeps jumping back and forth and I'm not sure like what the main focus is supposed to be on. I don't know how I feel about this book yet. So stay tuned. We're only, I'm only 100 pages in. So yeah. So I'm almost 300 pages into The Art of Starving and I'm not loving it. I wish it was just focusing on one thing, like his eating disorder, or his missing sister, or the fact that he's gay, but it's focusing on all these things at once, and it's just too, too many things to focus on. So that's my big critique of this book. I don't know, there's the relationship in this that I don't really understand, and that's another Part of this book that's just like it's too many things that are happening like the author wanted to touch on all of these things for Matt and it's just too much so like I really just wish it was about his eating disorder and that's it but it's like about four big things like really big things and it's just it is not working for me so i am not loving this i have like less than 100 pages left so i'm gonna finish it but like i don't like this book so i finished the art of starving and i gave it two stars i'm not gonna lie i skimmed like the last 30 pages i don't know it just was so many things going on and it wasn't great and it's described as being funny and nothing about this book was funny so i don't know the writing was good that's about it, two stars. Okay, so the next book that I'm starting is Into the Water by Paula Hawkins. I read The Girl on the Train a couple years ago and I thought it was good, thought the movie sucked, but I was impressed with the book. I have not heard super great things about this one. I know it's a mystery thriller. This is one of the two adult books that Castleman picked, so let's see. Okay, so I'm almost 200 pages into Into the Water, and I don't know. I don't know, because it is told, it's a mystery, right? It starts with Nell is a woman, she's dead, and it's afterwards, it's told in so many different perspectives, and it took me so long to figure out who the fuck was who, and I just don't think it's the best way to tell this story, so I was like kind of super into it in the beginning, and now I just don't want to pick it up at all, but uh, I'm gonna finish it, so I, overall, I don't know. 
I, I don't know. I, mm. Okay, so I have a hundred pages left of Into the Water. And we just found out, like, who the killer was. But I still have a hundred pages left, so is there going to be another twist? And it's not, like, all that exciting to begin with. With all these perspectives, it's just, like, kind of confusing. And I am, like, I was still a little unsure about who the fuck anyone is. So when they were like, oh, this dude did it, I was like, okay. But I still have 100 pages left, so is it gonna get better? Because, I don't know. Okay, so I finished Into the Water, and it was not good. So... I think a couple of things, a couple of things. I didn't like the way it was written. It was told in way too many perspectives and it just did not work. Half of the time I didn't know, like I didn't remember who even the people were. And then the whole mystery part was like not exciting at all. Like none of this was exciting. It was boring. I was bored the whole time and it's mystery and yeah. It just, ah, it was not good, so I'm gonna give this two stars. I was gonna be nice and give it three stars, but I was just so bored. So, it doesn't even deserve three stars. So, just two stars for Into the Water. Next is Hot Dog Girl by Jennifer Dugan. I have heard very mixed things about this one. It's the last YA book in my TBR, so let's see. This has not been good. I've rated everything pretty low. And the worst part is I owned these books, so it's my own fault. Okay, let's see if this one's any good at all. Okay, so I'm literally only 22 pages into Hot Dog Girl, and the main character, Eloise, has just been complaining the whole 22 pages, and it's super annoying, and so far I'm not liking it 22 pages in. It's a really short book, which is a small grace I have with this, but if she's like this the whole book, I don't know if I'm gonna make it. Okay, so Eloise likes this guy who has a girlfriend, and she's bi, and she is now pretending to date her best friend who's a girl to make this guy jealous. I don't understand how she thinks that's going to work, and I, I, I don't understand. I'm on page 93. Okay, so I'm almost done Hot Dog Girl. And I know I said this in my previous clip, but I'm gonna just say it again that Eloise is like the worst character I think I've ever read. I hate her so much. She's rude. She, I don't, she, she's just not a good person, like at all. I really like her friend Celie, and I wish that Celie was the main character because I think Celie is great, and this book would have been better from her point of view, and Eloise sucks. Anyway, I'm almost done. Okay, so I finished Hot Dog Girl by Jennifer Dugan, and I don't even know what to rate it. Two and a half stars, probably. I did not like Eloise at all. I would have preferred if this was told from Celie's point of view because Celie was actually awesome. I like the friendship with her and Nick, but overall, I don't know. I'm not impressed with this book at all. It was fine. Two and a half stars. So finally, my last book is Where the Crawl Dad Sing by Delia Owens. This has been on the New York Times bestselling list for I think over a hundred weeks. I'm actually kind of hopeful about this. So we'll definitely see. It's kind of long and that makes me nervous, but I'm trying to read 100 pages a day. So three days, four days, I don't know. Okay, so I'm on page 58 of Where the Crowd Dads Sing and it's set in like 19, it's set in two different timelines, one in like the 1950s and one in 1969. So in 1950s, the main character is like hanging out with her dad and it's set in like North Carolina on the coast and the author is writing like a really deep southern accent and for me it keeps tripping me up and I'm like what the fuck are you trying to say? So that's been interesting so far. Otherwise I don't have anything else to say about this yet. Except that the way that, like, the accent is written is really tripping me up and I just feel stupid, but I don't 
know if I'm supposed to or like I'm just like I'm trying not to skip that dialogue but I'm having a hard time reading it. Okay, so I'm 200 pages into where the crawdad sing. When? One of those. I don't know. Why has it been on the New York Times bestselling list for 100 weeks? Basically, this girl, Kaya, it starts with her mom leaving when she was six and they live in the marsh of North Carolina and she's basically living by herself and she doesn't go to school and anything and she's just surviving and now she's 19 years old and that's where I am and it's fine like I'm having a fine time reading it but like it's not that exciting I don't get it I have 160 pages left so maybe something amazing will happen but otherwise it's just been like I don't I don't know it's okay I feel like I'm about to get my reader's card revoked because I'm gonna give Where the Crawdads Sing two stars! Ooh! Yeah, I know! This did not do anything for me. I liked, I guess, the part where she was the marsh girl or whatever, but then there was this weird trial that didn't make any sense at all in this story. And it just was so stupid. And I like read a few paragraphs of the last like five pages and figured out what happened and I not impressed. I'm gonna like get my reader's card revoked because that is not a popular opinion and I oh well I don't know so that's it. Stay tuned for a recap. Okay so this is the wrap up for my husband choosing my TBR. I did this over the course of three weeks, so I am a little rusty on the star ratings that I gave these books, but I think I kind of remember. Into the Water by Paula Hawkins, I gave two stars. I think I was going to be nice and give it three stars, but it was just so confusing with all the aspects and the mystery was boring. So two stars, didn't love this, yeah. Next is Hot Dog Girl by Jennifer Dugan. I really didn't like this and <laughs> hated the main character and that's never a good thing. So I ended up giving this 2.5 stars. I really didn't like that Eloise was using her best friend to try to make a boy jealous who already had a girlfriend. Like that, none, that, that didn't make any sense to me, so yeah. Next is Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens. I I I am in the minority with this and I completely know it, but I gave this two stars. I just thought this was so boring and I did not care at all about Kaya and there was a trial in this and it was so stupid. It was, I, I'm one of those people that didn't like it. One of the few who did not like this one, so yeah. First book that I read was Peaches by Jodi Lynn Anderson. From what I can remember, this was not good, fat phobic, and racist. Like from the very beginning, I gave this two stars. I think that's me being very nice, so yeah, don't recommend this one. And then the next one is The Art of Starving by Sam J. Miller. This was described as being funny, and it definitely wasn't. And the author was focusing on too many very big important things in this boy's life, and I wish that the author had just focused on the eating disorder because I think that was the most important and all the other things just got in the way. So I gave this two stars. And then Stay Sweet by Siobhan Vivian got the highest rating out of everything and that was three stars. I ended up enjoying this a lot. I know that I really did not like how it was written but overall the story was good. I probably will give Siobhan Vivian another try because I think her contemporaries are cute but I don't know if they're all written in third person, which did not work for me. So that's it. These are all the books that I read over the course of three weeks for this video. It did not go well, <laughs> but I can't even blame Castleman because he picked these books right off my shelf. So yeah, so that's it. Thanks for watching my video.